I'm a huge believer in chapters and, you know, in my career, uh, I've embraced different chapters, you know, moving from one institution to another, um, uh, moving from, uh, one sector to another and, but I've always had an entrepreneurial interest, right? So I created my first consulting company, uh, my first entrepreneurial efforts, you know, in my early 20s. Uh, like so many folks, you know, I, I used to throw parties uh, back in the day. And, you know, that was my first taste of, you know, entrepreneurial engagement, right? So throwing parties, throwing social events. Uh, shout out to ABCD Productions. Those of you who know, you know, it goes way back. It's a, a small little part of the story. Um, but also, too, I started my first consulting firm when I was a doctoral student at Wisconsin and or excuse me, at University of Michigan. And in starting that consulting firm, you know, I was 24 years old, uh, 25 years old, and I cut my first sixty five, seventy thousand dollar consulting deal. I wasn't even a doctoral candidate. And, you know, one thing led to another. I had some opportunities presented to me. I proposed up. I got a little five thousand dollar contract. And it was in that quick moment of getting a $5,000 contract, the woman came back to me. She said, well, you know somebody who does program evaluation. I had done a little training. I had just taken a program evaluation course. I said, well, I can do a program evaluation. She said, well, give me a proposal. Did a proposal and ultimately ended up, you know, having this, this pocket of work. And then from there, really never did, you know, um, uh, never was there a time where I wasn't consulting, right? So it was always there. Uh, in terms of, you know, finding ways to take your talent to market. As a doctoral student, I had three or four jobs. As an undergrad, I had three or four jobs. So for me, multitasking and multi-channeling revenue was always a part of who I was. But at the same time, I was moving a very traditional pathway, you know, writing books, in the academy, get the PhD, you know, rise up to be an executive, you know. Um, and... I was a vice provost, associate chancellor at 30, 34, 33. So I was the youngest in the country at that. I was assistant chancellor at 28. Um, you know, and then, you know, moved into the nonprofit sector, was doing those things. So I had accomplished a, all of the things really that I wanted to do administratively. Um, and I had a point where, candidly, I didn't want to be inside of an organization where I had a noose around my neck on my creativity. I had a noose around my neck in terms of my identity. I had a noose around my neck in terms of my intensity. And I wanted to see if what I thought I was, I really was. And I wanted to know, could I go out there and make it fly, right? Could I go out there and fly on my own wings to take, you know, my heart, my passion, my grit, my resilience, my belief, my desire to be a change agent and turn that into a successful entrepreneur endeavor that I could take care of me and my family and I could do it on our terms and we could have the type of impact we wanted to have in the world. And um, I wanted to be able to move faster and more dynamically. But I also felt the fear that comes with, you know, a mortgage, the fear that comes with a car note, the fear that comes with tuition, the fear that comes with being able to maintain your family in the, 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 the standards and the custom uh, in which uh, they have found themselves to be. And I'm blessed to be in a, in a, in a couple uh, dynamic where my wife is also a professional, but as a man, uh, as a partner, as a, a spouse, there's something I have to do inside that, right? And, you know, but I felt like I could. I never forget when I came to my wife and I told her, I was like, look, I'm going, uh, uh, I'm standing down on that six figure opportunity over here. I'm standing down on that presidency over there. Uh, of some iconic organizations that I had a chance to get in the mix on and some offers that had came through. And she kind of looked at me like, what? You have a chance to be president and do this and do that. And, and, and for me, I said, it was in that moment of truth, right? And I believe as leaders, we have these different moments of truth where the world presents you with a question. And the only way you can answer that question is knowing exactly who you are exactly what you're about and exactly what you're willing to put into a situation to be successful. That was this situation. I was being posed that question in life. And I told her, I said, I think I want to bet on me. And it was that, it was really just that direct that I said, I want to bet on me. I want to, I want to, I believe. And I had gone down to the basement of my house um, the day after, you know, I, I had left uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of America and I wrote a plan. Uh, uh, 
quickly, you know. I believe the greatest ideas can be sketched out in a couple minutes. Now, to really flesh it all out, you know, take some time and resources and lots of stuff. But I built it quick, and I started working on it the next day. And I haven't stopped working on it since that time. And, you know, we have now work with everybody from American Airlines to Harvard to, you know, the Brooklyn Nets, uh, FedEx, Berkeley, um, you know, Kyle Poly, you know, uh, uh, Teach for America, you know, we've had a chance to partner with so many different spaces around diversity, equity, and inclusion work, and um, uh, hopefully we'll continue to be fortunate and continue to have a chance to grow.